welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Good morning, everybody. I am Noelle McClooney. I'm the current president at MVUC, and I will be presenting service today along with Sarah Rainey Smithback, who is our director of religious education. Robin Perry and Kevin McClooney are providing technical assistance. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Uh, we are glad that we can keep in touch and support our community, even though we can't be together in person right now. Please be aware that we are recording this service and it will be posted on our Facebook and YouTube pages. We gather today to foster our understanding of our place in the universe, embracing the worth and dignity of all, supporting justice, equity, and peace in our world, accepting one another as we search for meaning and respecting the connectedness of all life. Please take a moment to think of all your friends at MBUC Greet them with a comment in the chat box, and remember that you can still reach out to them via email, phone, social media, or video chat. Physical distancing does not need to mean emotional distancing. Let us support one another. Visitors, we are a diverse group with varying interests and beliefs. Our services are varied in format, tone, and topic. We encourage you to view several services to gain a good understanding of our congregation. If you'd like to receive our weekly email newsletter, please email us at news at mvuc.org. MVUC remains committed to supporting our members and friends during this difficult time of social distancing. For that reason, we are coordinating assistance with groceries, phone calls, and other needs. If this sounds like something that would be helpful to you, please send an email to sac at mvuc.org with your name and what kind of assistance you would like to request. Now is the time for announcements. Announcements can be sent ahead of time to services at mvuc.org to be read. Um, if you have an import, important announcement now, you can raise your hand by clicking the raise hand button at the bottom of the participant box in Zoom. Then we'll, we'll announce your name and turn on your mic and camera so you can make your announcement yourself. Robin, are there any announcements today? I do not see any announcements in the email and I am not getting any announcements in the chat or any raised hands. I don't believe there are any announcements today. Okay. Then we can move on. Okay, so now is the time to light the chalice. Please join me in reading the words for the chalice lighting that appear as a comment in the chat box. Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. opening reading. Meditation on Hope and Love in a Time of Struggle by Alice and Chempa Nasiman. In a world so filled with brokenness and sorrow, it would be easy to lose ourselves in never-ending grief. 
to be choked by our outrage, to be par paralyzed by the enormity of suffering, to feel our hearts squeeze tight with hopelessness. Instead, this morning, let us simply breathe together as we hold our hearts open, breathing in as our hearts fill with compassion, breathing out as we hope or pray for healing in our world and in our lives, breathing in, opening ourselves to the transforming power of love, breathing out as we hope or pray for peace in our world and in our lives, breathing in as we hold hope in our hearts, breathing out as we hope for justice in our world and in our lives, May we know our strength, may we be filled with courage, may our love flow from us into this world. Now we will listen to Lynn Israel singing, We Would Be One. Lyrics are posted in the chat if you'd like to sing along. Thank you, everyone. Um, I am Sarah Rainey Smithback. I'm the Director of Religious Education here, and I'm presenting our reflection today. As many of you know, we have run a very successful Hogwarts inspired summer camp for kids in grades preschool through eighth grade since 2015. Every year we fill to capacity, usually with an eager waiting list. And it's been an annual event that takes our whole congregation to put on. There's always something for everyone to help with, putting up castle walls, making quills, stocking our kitchen full of fun and healthy snacks for the kids, teaching classes, and so much more. Decorating our church to physically transform into a magical castle, complete with floating candles and castle walls, takes a lot of people pouring their creative hearts into the effort. COVID-19 made our plans for year six come to a screeching halt. In March, we had already started enrolling for our annual camp, but then everything came crashing down. We quarantined, we waited. Finally, at the end of spring, we made the difficult decision to not host an in-person summer camp, but we began discussing moving camp online. At first, I was 
really, really not feeling confident about moving Hogwarts School of Magic and Fun online. I was just ending school at home with six kids. And to be quite honest, I was physically and emotionally exhausted from the computer screens. We were all zoomed out. The thought of doing a week of online camp was just too overwhelming. But then I noticed a note that my daughter had left for her step siblings before going to her other mom's house for the weekend. It said, meet us in Roblox at 2 p.m. on Sunday. I realized that the kids were making plans to hang out in a virtual space while they were apart. How novel, how innovative. Their ability to keep connected and socialize across houses got my gears turning. What if we did Hogwarts camp in a virtual world like Roblox or Minecraft? I talked with a lot of other gaming experts, mostly kids, gathering data on the pros and cons of different gaming worlds and started recruiting professors, hoping that our awesome members of our congregation would be willing to follow me online follow me into Zoom and into the virtual gaming world of Minecraft, which is what we ultimately decided to go with. But by June, um, the board and I had met and decided to go forward with online camp. But by June, also JK Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter book series, was also on yet another Twitter storm, spouting transphobia and misinformation about trans people. And she refused to back down or apologize, despite appeals from Daniel Radcliffe, who plays Harry Potter in the film series, and many other prominent figures. Rowling's tweets were devastating to the LGBTQ community, many of whom had found refuge as young people in the book series that brought kids to a magical universe where you could be whoever you wanted, despite your birth. At Hogwarts, kids were offered the idea of a found family a place to belong when your birth family was dead or totally unsupportive. Rowling's tweets and refusal to engage in meaningful conversation with, her, with the trans community caused millions of readers to take a more critical eye at her entire book series, and we all began to see cracks in the facade. For example, why so much of the series is devoted to the theme that one's birth does not control one's destiny, in the end, it is exactly Harry's unique bloodline that allows him to defeat Voldemort, which is the evil figure. In the end, blood and birth do make the difference. Others have also criticized her depiction of goblins with their long noses and penchant for banking as emblematic or of her dismissiveness of the discrimination Jewish people continue to face. Or her depiction of the entire species of slaves who enjoy being enslaved. Who do, what, who do not want rights, but just want to serve humans as symptomatic of her own racism. There is no denying that upon careful reflection, Rowling's transphobia, racism, and anti-Semitism seeps through the entire book series. In June, millions of people began to distance themselves from Rowling and the Harry Potter series entirely. I also took a few weeks in my online camp planning to reflect on whether or not I could ethically continue to head a Hogwarts inspired camp. I read a lot and talked with a lot of my peers and ultimately I decided to move forward because the version of the magical universe that we've created is now indelibly unique to MVUUC and JK Rowling's bigotry and problems in the books cannot take that from us. So along with my peers and the MVUUC board, I wrote a public statement explaining the decision. In this statement, I wrote, Rowling's recent comments have been so hurtful precisely because the HP world, Harry Potter world, was a refuge for so many of us. It's a place where a group of teens could come together to fight an unjust and fascist system, where love and friendship were more powerful than blood where an outcast could find meaning and connection. Thus, it's imperative that we also acknowledge how hurt fans are by Rawlings tweets. But what Rawling cannot control is how we respond to the mix of good and bad in the text. The reality of any text or any art 
is that once it's out in the world, it, is no, it no longer fully belongs to the author. We can talk about it, argue with it, critique it, rewrite parts of it. We have the power of response. We also decided to take some concrete steps, including donating a portion of the proceeds of our camp to the Trevor Project, the leading national organization providing crisis intervention and suicide prevention services to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning young people under 25. In addition, we decided to offer more explicit content at camp to address homophobia, transphobia, and other types of bigotry. I had noticed that Jessica Gray, the person who originally created the Unitarian Universalist version of Hogwarts with our unique houses of Wind Horse, Phoenix Fire, Wave Rider, and Stone Dragon, I noticed that she was teaching courses online for kids about LGBTQ plus pride. So I reached out to her and, and asked if she'd be interested in teaching at our camp. And she agreed to oh. an arts class about pride makeup. This course would introduce all students to age appropriate understandings of sexual orientation diversity and gender identity diversity and the prejudice minorities face. During camp, we used the course to also generate conversations about gender identity and diversity so that in our opening ceremony one morning, we discussed preferred pronouns and everyone changed their Zoom screen name to reflect their preferred pronouns. <laughs> A few days later, I also discussed Rowling's tweets in our morning assembly and I explained that some other schools and camps had decided to show their disapproval of Rowling's by removing the name Hogwarts from their schools and camps. Because we are Unitarian Universalists, and principle five is that each and every person should have a vote in things that concern them, I asked the students what they thought. A few offered new names for the camp, including Witches and Wizard Camp and Magic Camp, but many said that they wanted to keep our names, our name Hogwarts School of Magic and Fun. Their reasons were sound and heartwarming. Several students reminded me that we have always said that we were the American Hogwarts, different from the one overseas that Harry Potter attended. And many said we could have the name, but always remind people that we were different and inclusive. One student also spoke eloquently, explaining that this camp has been such an important part of their life for so many years, and that renaming it seemed to erase that history. After speeches, we used Zoom technology to put, to, to put it to a vote, and approximately 70% of the students voted to keep our name Hogwarts School of Magic and Fun. Many parents wrote to me expressing their approval of our open discussion of trans issues and for empowering the students to make their own decisions. One parent also shared on Facebook, this is a quote from, from this parent, today, our daughter took the Defense Against the Dark Arts LGBTQ plus Pride Makeup class for the MVUUC Hogwarts camp, which is virtual this year. It was wonderful to be a fly on the wall listening as someone other than my partner and I said all the things we've been saying for years. The instructor was confident and knowledgeable and accurate, and we weren't the ones who got her there. She was there and my kid was just in this class with other kids also getting accurate and affirming information. It was amazing. It was such a rare treat as in it's never happened to have an experience like the one we had had today to just be there. No cringing, no bracing, just grateful. Our daughter was moved to share her own transgender status in the class. And after the class, she was especially proud to be repping the rainbow, end quote. Together, our camp staff and students work to transfigure our version of Hogwarts into something more inclusive, more affirming, and something that seeks to always improve. But there were other important transfigurations happening to our magical week too. Although all the students and parents had tasted virtual learning that spring when the pandemic hit, Hogwarts camp was all of our first sustained educational experience after summer break. The technical aspects of turning in-person camp into virtual camp were a hurdle, but 
But the emotional aspect of this process were profound for many of us, including me, during camp. It was especially intense for those of us who had experiences with in-person camp. I noticed my own kids were short-tempered that first day and quick to tears when things didn't go perfectly. I too was emotionally drained and edgy after that first day of camp. Then I received a few emails from parents who also reported stressed kids, but one <laughs> insightful parent named it, she called it grief. It made total sense. The kids and I were experiencing so many levels of grief. Grief about not having in-person camp. Grief about having to face virtual school in the fall. Grief about a summer of unknowns, worry, and cancellations. Once we named and honored the grief, the kids and I were able to work through some of those feelings. And serendipi serendipitously, I had the inclination to design a Defense Against the Dark Arts class for camp about grief. I wasn't really connecting it, but I had already designed a class for it. At the time, I was thinking that it would help kids deal with the grief about so many of the canceled plans they had had over the summer. But the class turned into a time for us to process grief about school, camp, worries about the virus, and so much more. For the older kids, our project involved taking a ceramic bowl and breaking it into pieces, which was very therapeutic, um, and then decorating the pieces with words and images related to the parts of us that had been hurt, and then gluing them all back together. This art therapy practice allowed us to think about the ways Hogwarts camp was changed, but also better in some ways. We were able to do camp while spending time with our families, and we were able to meet and interact with new campers from all over the United States, including Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, California, Kentucky, Indiana, Vermont, New York, and more. Transfiguration is the process of reconfiguring something into something new, usually something better and improved. I can't think of a better word for, to characterize the overall experience of our sixth year. Faced with transphobia from the very author who began our magical journey into this world, our camp transfigured that bigotry into something educational, inclusive, and affirming. And faced with a global pandemic that shut down in-person camp, we transfigured ourselves into a virtual learning community across state borders, across diverse identities, and discussed our grief and our will to continue and make the world into our vision of a better place. We were all transfigured by the virtual experience of camp. Different, but better. Now I'd like to show um, a slideshow. So for those of you that have seen previous iterations of our end of, um, end of Hogwarts camp service, I always do a slideshow with lots of pictures. Um, it's a little bit different than usual um, because I had a lot of pictures of computer screens. Um, but many parents were so kind uh, to share pictures that they had taken and words um, about their experience with camp that um, I was able to go ahead and put on a slideshow. So I'm going to have, um, I'm going to share my screen. Yep. So I'll need um, Robin to enable screen sharing for me. And then I'll be able to share my screen so we can see the PowerPoint. Try again. Oh, there it is. Okay, yep. And then hit share down there. Okay. So now you should be able to see my PowerPoint. And then I'm going to start it. Okay, so now you should see a little clip. Okay. So virtual camp was a little bit different because we had to ship uh, classroom supplies to everyone that registered. So as I mentioned before, we had a lot of students that registered not locally. Um, and so one of those pictures is all the different um, 
the priority mail packages we had to ship out um, through the post office to reach those students. And then we also have a um, picture there of the uh, example of a bag for class. So uh, Professor Falcon did a transfiguration potions class where she uh, transfigured raw ingredients into uh, footage quaffle power balls. And so the ingredients were in that packet. So each class had its own little baggie um, with all of the materials. For the local kids, I also delivered um, the boxes in person. So that's a picture of me delivering. Um, and then everyone received their packages. So see, these are some of the pictures that parents shared of the packages they received. Um, they have boxes of candy from um, Honeydukes, complete with chocolate frogs and crickets to eat and all sorts of other magical goodies, wands. Um, and they also included uh, their behavior agreement, which usually they would sign and give to me in person at Hogwarts, but they had to mail the behavior agreement through Alpost this year. So I know some of you are not very familiar with Minecraft or what it looks like. So this is kind of what um, on the right hand side is what our great hall looks like. So you can see it has the tables and then the hanging candles. And so that was um, our, our great hall. I'm going to see if I have a minute. So I'm gonna, I think this will work. So one day um, I wanted to show everyone what it looked like for the kids to move. So one morning we did um, virtual exercise in uh, Minecraft. So if you look on the right hand screen, it's going to start moving. I think it will. We'll try it. So as you can see, they would move around in Minecraft, but then we would be talking and listening to each other over Zoom. And so it was, it was a lot of technology going on, but the kids reported uh, that they loved Minecraft. Um, so we had to, um, yeah, a, the, a tradition in Hogwarts campus at the end of the day, they share their favorite parts. That first day I learned to be specific about my question and ask, what were the classes that you enjoyed the most? Because otherwise I just got a lot of Minecraft uh, comments. <laughs> so they really liked Minecraft and uh, exploring it. It had everything in that world, including Quidditch Field, Hogsmeade, um, the maze, lots of different places and parts of um, Hogwarts that you would know from reading the books. And so it was really a, a good place for them to explore. On the left hand side there, uh, we had a, our theme this year was Worlds Apart, Worlds Together. And so one day we had a, uh, a world challenge day and each house was challenged to make a kind of sculpture in Minecraft um, to represent world challenge day. So that's what that made me know. Each house was also asked to complete um, or engage in some kind of service project. This was a little bit harder this year because um, in the house common time they were in Minecraft. So it was very difficult for some of the students to not just keep exploring the castle and to focus on service projects. But many of the houses were able to do um, service activities. So for example, Phoenix Fire collected um, food for the Brown Rag project and um, Riley is in Stone Dragon was they collected, they picked up trash in their area. And so this is a picture of one of our campers, Riley, um, picking up trash um, near his house. So I have some class pictures. So this was potions class, which is always one of our best classes. Um, and Professor Elixiria um, is there in the Zoom window holding up the cup. And there's pictures of students doing 
um, potions, they did color changing tea, and they focused on invisibility and invisibility ink this year. And then we had art class and also care of magical creatures. So here's some examples of some of the artwork they did. Care of magical creatures was all about owl pellets this year. So they dissected an owl pellet and learned about how owls eat. Um, and so that was lots of fun for them. We had ancient runes and ancient studies this year. So on the left there, we have um, poses that students did or created. I know that the top one is the emu pose that Bella created um, in ancient studies. And on the right is ancient runes. So they learned, um, they made their own set of ancient runes, but then they also did some decoding and puzzle solving um, through ancient rune class. Incantation, um, Professor Anova, also known as Demetrius, uh, led incantations in music class. And so we have, uh, there they made instruments, including pan flutes. And then in herbology and, and transfigurations potions were two other classes. So in herbology, they learned about seed germination and they got seeds to begin germinating, including bean seeds, but also um, a special plant called, that's often referred to as tickle plants where their um, leaves will respond to touch. So they're very, very magical plants. And then um, the other pictures there are of the students making the transfiguration potions and eating them and enjoying them as well. And then one of the Defense Against the Dark Arts class I spoke about earlier. So this is my class. For the older kids, they did the bowls um, where they broke apart the bowls. For the younger kids, they did um, we created worry boxes. So you can see a picture there of me holding up my worry box and Riley at home working on his box. And we also created breathing wands. So the picture on the left is uh, my students in that class holding up their breathing wand to focus on um, deep breathing and meditative breathing to create a sense of calmness. And then of course we have the Defense Against the Dark Arts Pride Makeup class. And so um, there again is Riley taking the class and then other students sent in pictures of some of the pride makeup they did on their faces. And this is a picture of when we um, together during our assembly voted on the name of our school. So you can see there that I think it came out to 68% voted for keeping at the School of Hogwarts Magic and Fun. We also had guest visitors, just like we normally do at Hogwarts. Um, on the left there is our guest visitors. They were from Michigan, but they taught us about spider folklore and mythology. And then on the right, we had a guest visitor who actually lives most of the year in Egypt, although she was in Belgium at the time. So a very um, transnational experience. And she taught us about uh, Egyptian mythology and folklore. We also had a daily prophet. Um, it wasn't a physical daily prophet this year, but Sophie Shockett um, offered to volunteer to maintain our daily prophet blog. And so we would have students send in um, artwork or stories, short stories that they wrote and post them to our blog. And then we also created a website for our class archive. So as you can imagine, sometimes technology fails and if a student um, had to miss a class or couldn't get connected, uh, we wanted them to be able to still watch that class at another time. So all the sessions were, were recorded and then uploaded into a private space on our website so that the class, so that the students enrolled in those classes could watch it at a later time. So these are some of the quotes that I received from some of the parents. So for those of you that can't read the screen, I'm gonna read them all out, out loud. Um, the level of thought and care that went into every aspect of camp, I'm gonna to have to move that, yeah. I'll move it. There, okay. The level of care, thought and care that went to every aspect of camp was evident to us, including all the fun we had receiving the materials in the mail, which were very well done and organized. We love that the classes were so hands-on and engaging, as well as thoughtful and informative. It was a really positive experience for my kiddo who typically does not enjoy virtual classes. 
and everyone in our house is blown away by the Minecraft Hogwarts world and are happy to give the kids a little more time to play and explore their once camp is done. We're grateful that we have the opportunity to participate in the camp and hope it's something we can do in the future. Um, from a local parent, my son had so much fun this week and he said it was sad to end. Um, a big thank you to everyone who helped with this whole long event. And then another one from Pennsylvania. We loved Hogwarts camp. We, were, uh, we are already planning our drive down to Ohio for next year if camp is in person, but we will also sign up again if it stays remote. Uh, and then a local parent said, thank you for a great week. We're so glad she was able to join in and participate in the camp this year. It was great to be able to keep up the tradition in a unique way. And then another Pennsylvania parent, uh, we absolutely love camp. I basically went around the corner and saw that the worry box. Thank you for that. All the items in the box and the classes were spot on and it was so amazing to be connected to such a wonderful community. Our daughter enjoyed all the classes and her favorite was your bedtime stories because I read stories every night um, to students who wanted to log in for a bedtime story. Overall, we were so grateful for everything and it was more than we expected and such a great and positive experience. We would be so glad to participate again next year. And then thanks to, from a local parent, thanks again for running Hogwarts. It's always fun and educational. The Zoom Minecraft version went quite well. Kudos to you and everyone involved in making it so engaging and frustration free. And then one from Illinois, I got a message from, from when it, someone in Illinois says he's ready to attend in-person camp next year. <laughs> and then uh, one of our campers sent in artwork for the final um, image here. So all of our, so this is the Stone Dragon house, but Juno's from Stone Dragon, but she did it in everyone's colors to show that we were a houses united this year. You can hit stop share. And that is the end of my presentation. The red. Thank you, Sarah. That was so fun to see all the pictures. Um, now, more than ever, we are counting on your pledge payments and donations to help sustain and strengthen this congregation that is so important to all of us, supporting our efforts to be a community of love, truth, justice, and service. Please click on the link in the chat box or scan the QR code and be sure to select the correct designation on the drop down box when you donate. Thank you.
a time for sharing of joys and concerns and milestones. If you would like to share a joy or concern, you can raise your hand by clicking the raise hand button at the bottom of the participant box in Zoom. Then we will announce your name and turn on your mic and camera so you can share your joy or concern yourself. Or you can type your joy or concern in the chat and we will read it. Many faith communities make space in their worship services for the sharing of life's blessings and hardships. Some call it prayers of the people, others invoke the elements of fire and air in the form of a candle. Rituals are developed to share significant life transitions. Here at MVUC, the elements of stone and water help give voice to our deepest feelings. Okay, um, so I see that there is a concern from Winnie. Uh, Winnie, I am going to unmute you and ask you to start your video. Um, oh, sorry. Hi. Um, I just want to express a concern for everybody who's um, is experimenting, I don't know if that's the right word, with, with uh, going back to some sort of in-person, um, particular educational experience uh, this fall. Um, my daughter is at a small college in Maine, and the students are coming in this weekend. Um, she's in a residential facility where 200 students will be moving in. Um, so I'm more concerned about her and all of them, but um, just a general concern for everybody that's trying this out in this unusual time and hoping for their uh, good help. Thank you, Thank you Annie. Um, Becky Croak has a joy, so I am going to uh, unmute and ask you to turn your video on as well. There we go. Hello. Um, my joy, do you hear me? Okay. Um, my joy is that um, my middle son, Kevin, and his wife, Erica, welcomed their second child, Austin Jeffrey, on um, August 9th. And um, so he joins his three-year-old sister, Piper, and they're in North Carolina, so they're all doing well, and that's my excitement. Awesome. Thank you, Becky. Um, Megan in the chat has a concern. Uh, Rich Dyth's mom passed away this past week. She had been ill for a long time and Rich had a chance to visit her just a few hours before she crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Uh, moving on to Susan Rogers, Joy in the chat. Her brother visited this weekend to visit with our mom outside on Sunday. So glad he got a chance to see her. Um, and Megan seconds Winnie's concern. And I do not see any other raised hands. Um, I'll put a one in for um, just, you know, a joy to thank Sarah for the, the immense amount of work that went into Hogwarts and coordinating everything. Um, it really meant a lot to, to my son Desmond and um, even Malcolm really enjoyed it. Um, and I was really glad that we didn't have to cancel and take something else away from them, but we were able to still still do it for them. And like you said, you know, it was different, but in some ways, you know, it was kind of better in some ways. So uh, thank you, Sarah, for that. And then I will place one more stone uh, to represent all the joys and concerns still in our hearts. And then I have the closing words, and um, I'm already on my way. This is by Joanne Lessig, and it's called When Things Go Back to How They Used to Be. Will you still take it for granted when you join your friends for a meal? Or will you raise your glass in honor and tell them how you feel? When you look at total strangers, will there be kindness in your face? Will you find more joy and laughter in most any time or place? Will you put forth extra effort when someone is in need? Will, you sm will your smile be so much brighter to those who teach your child to read? 
Will you anticipate family reunions like a child on Christmas Day? Will you listen to your grandparents deeper and the things that they may say? Will you curl up in your mother's arms like you did when you were small? Will you take your father by his hand and go out for a stroll? Will you marvel in the glory of your grandchildren at play? Will you watch them in their slumber, peaceful as they lay? Will you embrace a little longer in the arms of those you love? Will your soul get that much stronger? Will you thank the stars above? This is a time to persevere, make sacrifice, take heed. But how much has your outlook changed on what you really need? I often hear most people say they want things back to how they used to be. But where were we all, but were we all a little spoiled? Blind, but now we see. As with all things, this too shall pass and we will no longer be apart. I just pray that there are lessons learned and we enfold them deep within our hearts. And now it is time to extinguish our chalice. So again, you can join me in reading the words for extinguishing our chalice that can be found in the comments in the chat box. While we may come from different places and speak in different tongues, our hearts beat as one. After service, we will turn on all videos and mics. Feel free to stay in Zoom and chat with your fellow MVC members and friends and visitors. Please be patient as turning on the cameras uh, must be done one at a time, so it takes a little while. And I know Sarah was gonna definitely stay and talk as well, so, um, please join us for that. And now we'll have our closing song. We're gonna do it instrumentally today uh, with the piano and give me a second, I'm, I think I got it. So here we go. Again, that's the end of our service, but please stay for the virtual coffee hour discussion time. Thank you.